Hey guys, and welcome back to the episode three of our home lab misadventure. Why it's misadventure? Because I have zero idea of what I am doing and I'm making mistakes on every step. So it's pretty fun. But in a previous series, we did assembly all the hardware for our budget TrueNAS server for my home for the private reasons and whatever. And if you missed that, then go and watch it. I will link it somewhere as a card. And today we'll do the actual TrueNAS scale operating system configuration to let's say put our hardware to the work we'll create a storage data set share and probably also talk about the arc memory and uh, what is recommended to do with it if you are having the true nas server so getting back and straight to the true nas operating system itself as you can see we have a true nas scale 23.10.1.3 and we have only 16 gigs of the memory which is not making me feel very comfortable and to be honest the idea was to have 24 and we don't have 24 because 8 gigs are here in my hands and uh, 8 gigs are in my hands because that server doesn't want to boot with three sticks uh, where two of them are g-skill and one is the cheapest that you can get uh, in amazon um, speeds are very different i didn't spend much time troubleshooting but yeah the fact is a fact it doesn't boot with three sticks so I removed the cheap one and we have only 16. Hopefully it's still gonna be enough because I have just uh, three eight terabytes discs if not we will get more. I also have a plans to run some uh, containers like a Plex server um, yeah possibly something else but about that later. So network is configured everything is good with that as far as, far as it goes for the CPU we have AMD Ryzen 5 1600 6 core and 12 threads processor which I think should be absolutely sufficient but as I said I have zero experience with this and that's the first time when I'm setting it up myself. And uh, to get it started what we need, basically we have this menu on the left side and we need to go through first four plus one menus to get the result. And uh, we need to start with the storage. So as you can see right now on the storage dashboard, there's no pool. And by the way, if you are wondering how to actually install the TrueNAS uh, operating system itself, again, go back to that previous episode one, we're doing also the operating installation there. So, uh, storage dashboard, no pools, we need to create a pool. We need to put our disks, hard drives to the actual work right now. So click create a pool and call it somehow. I will call it a uh, very simple, um, let's call it home NAS, right? I'm not gonna use encryption, that's up to you. If you wanna do that for some, some security reasons, in my case, this, this NAS server will be only local host probably even without internet access so i don't want to do that click next that's the most important thing which is the data where you need to choose the layout disk size width number of vdevs which is actually mandatory the only thing that we need to choose um which is actually optional but the only thing that we need to choose mandatory is the layout and for the layout uh, we can use a stripe Whereas just, let's say, if it's three 8 terabytes disks, then we will have 24 terabyte storage. But if something goes sideways, then we lose all, all our data. So there's no rate. The mirror, when we have, let's say, two disks, and they both are mirrored. So two disks where each of them is 8 terabytes means that we actually have uh, 8 terabytes of usable disk in the mirror mode. But we're going to use RAID Z. Uh, which will give us one disk parity. So we have three disks and if one disk dies, everything's going to be safe. And you can also see here what's the total capacity of the disks that you will be able to use. And again, three multiply with eight terabyte disks gives us 14.5 terabytes of actual usable disk. And if one disk dies, you still have your data. You just replace the disk and you continue from them. If you have multiple disks, let's say five, six and above, you probably should choose RAID Z2, uh, which also gives some other improvements and other security. But uh, yeah, basically you can read through, you see there's description for each RAID type and it will give you an explanation about benefits. 
um, downsides and what amount of the discs is recommended to actually choose that. For me, we're going with Ray Z1. And as you can see, the disk size is already selected automatically. It's 7.28 uh, terabytes uh, with three disks and number of VDEVs, just one. I would not recommend to have more than one VDEV if you're having, uh, let's say, less than eight or ten disks. If you're going above that, then yes, you can create multiple VDEVs uh, below 10, 8, um, absolutely not required. So... Uh, other stuff like log, spare, cache, metadata, and DDoP are optional, and those can be used if, as example, you can also find a description, log device that can improve speed, self-synchronous writes, optional write cache that can be removed. And for the spare, drive reserved for inserting data into data pool. Cache, ZFS level 2 arc read cache. We will be using just L1 our cache. So all of that, all of those are optional. And to be honest, for three disks, eight terabytes each, there's no place and no reason to configure any of that. So we fill in only the general info, we fill in the data where we just choose the disks, if you want to choose some specific disks, maybe you have five of them, and you want to choose only three, then click on a manual disk selection and pull in unassigned disks that you want to use in this um, RAID Z1. Then go to review and we can see RAID Z1, three disks, everything's good, 14.5 terabytes. Click create a pool. This contents of all added disks will be erased. So we're formatting our disk. Yes, we confirm that's the only thing what we can do. And here comes the magic magic of ZFS, ZFS, let's call it like that. It's very fast. If we would be doing any other uh, RAID system. It could take us hours, maybe even day to configure the pool, but with a ZFS it will probably be done right now while I'm still talking. There we go. Storage dashboard, home NAS, topology, we can have all of this stuff. Usage 0%, health online, very good. Disk health also very good. So the next thing that we need to continue is data sets. We have our storage, home NAS, and right now we need to add a data set. Um, as you can see from this page, you can also see all the details, the space management, uh, protection, if you want to have some snapshots, replications, and cloud sync. That's again some advanced stuff, not for the this beginner video where you just want to configure your simple RAID for your home environment. So add a data set. And parent path is a home NAS. The name will be, uh, let's call it, um, let's call it storage. Let's call it basement storage because it's going to be actually in a basement. Comments, no comments, sync, compression level, enable a time. You don't need to play around with any of these settings except just one. Scroll to the bottom, you will find the share type and you need to change from generic to the SMB. That's it. You don't need to do any ma any magic. You don't need to learn about this complicated stuff. So just share type from generic to the SMB. Click save. This will take again a couple of seconds and it's done. So we have our home NAS pool of the storages on which we have a data set basement storage, which is fine. And now we need to create a share. Share will be used in my case on a Windows. So we will be creating a Windows uh, SMB share. Click add here and path is mount like this name will be, uh, let's call it, how will we call it? Secret storage, purpose, default share parameters. Um, yep, we'll leave it like it, this and description enabled again. Basically, that's all we need. You can check the advanced parameters, but all the default values are pretty fine. You don't need to change anything here. Click Save. Validation. Share and create path local. The path must reside within the pool mount in point. Hey, we made some mistake. Let's go back. 
like this, right? And like this. So we need to select all the pad that we created with the data set. Pay attention. Click Save. S SMB service is not currently running, so it's going to be started automatically. Start the service now. Yes, and enable the service to start automatically if our NAS server will be rebooted. And mine will because right now it's under the table, but its designated place will be in the basement. And to do that, we'll need to drill the floor to actually pull in the Ethernet cable to the basement. That's going to be another adventure. Click, 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 click enable. And we have our secret storage SMB share. Now we need to create credentials and we need to create a local user and click add full name, Dmitry Lambert. And I will make it Latvian with S in the end. Uh, the password is the one that you will never guess. Thank God it matches. Email, optional, again, no need for me. UID, everything is good. Uh, user, yep, all fine. No need to change anything uh, here. Do we need a home directory? I don't think so. Let's delete it. And everything else, everything else looks good. Yep. Yes. Save. Within this configuration, the existing directory will be used as a home directory without creating a new directory for the user. I confirm that. Thank you. Home directory must be absolute path. Hmm. Let's do it like this. And basement storage. Click save. I confirm. Continue. There we go. So we created a user and now we need to go to the data sets. I think we're talking about the data sets or shares. No, data sets, basement storage and where we need to edit the permissions. We have the owner. Yeah, we already have an owner me. So this looks good and I have full permissions. Yes. So this looks nice. Uh, please specify your user group or user to change. We're not changing anything. We just verified. So right now, supposedly, we already have SMB share. And right now we can add our share to my Windows machine as a network storage. And to do that, we basically need to open my computer. And we can try it out. Um, backslash 18179 secret storage. And there it is, our secret storage. So we can copy this and uh, go to the no, 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 uh, whatever. Let's close this. Let's open it again and add map network drive or no, add a network location. Yes. Next, choose a custom network location. There we go. And type a name, secret storage. NAS. Let's call it like that. Open this finish. There we go. And right now, as you can see, we have a network location, secret storage NAS, NAS in which we can create a new text file, ASD. We can save. We can also edit. And we can also delete. Cool, right? So that's how you create your TrueNAS configuration in the TrueNAS scale operating system. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click subscribe and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.